problem we faced with is not that this earth cannot produce enough food for future generations. It can. We don't need six earths, as some people would argue. In fact, I was at a meeting two days ago when somebody made that point. So the problem is not lack of productive capacity. The problem is that we're not using that productive capacity in the best possible way. So therefore, producing biofuel in a situation where we utilize the productive capacity um, appropriately should not be a big problem, depending, of course, on how much resources we use. Land acquisition, I put this in the slide because I'm very concerned about what is currently happening in parts of Africa and parts of Asia. And I'm referring to foreign investment corporations, sovereign investment corporations, pension schemes and others um, taking control over large chunks of land in low-income developing countries. If the goal is to produce more food, that may in fact be the way to go because they will bring in capital intensive equipment and they will increase productivity. If the goal is to improve food security, meaning access to food at the household and individual level, then in most cases it is not a good idea. Because what happens is most of that land is populated by smallholder farms. When the uh, sovereign investment corporations send in their people after they got agreement by, from the government they can control this land, they push off these smallholders without giving them alternative uh, livelihood, income. So their food security deteriorates. So you can, free, you can end up in a situation where you produce more food and more food insecurity at the same time because most of the food that's being produced will be exported out of the country. Uh, China, for example, has um, taken control over large chunks of land uh, on conditions that the food is shipped to China. Same for India and several other countries. There is a need for more research. So if there are any PhD students here looking for a topic, there is a need for much more research to really understand what's happened in these uh, happening in these foreign direct investments in, in controlling land in developing countries. It's very difficult to get data because the governments keep these agreements secret. And you can speculate why they don't want to tell us what agreement they entered into. And I can certainly help you speculate about that if you like in the discussion. Climate change, I already talked about extreme weather events, but of course we have another part of climate change, which is the global warming that um, will reduce the productive capacity the closer you get to equator. So in the tropical and subtropical areas, you probably have a decrease in productive capacity. In the temperate zones, you would have an increase. The estimates that I've seen, and I have not done research on this, the estimates I've seen is that the global food production capability is not going to change very much. But, but the, where the food is produced is going to change, change rather dramatically over time. And then, of course, we all know that because of the rapid population growth, there's no way that this earth can feed future generations. So why don't we just give up now? Uh, that, of course, goes back to some books that were written some years ago, uh, Population Bomb and a few other things uh, with, with similar wonderful titles. Um, what is really happening is that the <coughs> population growth rate is dropping very, very significantly. And yes, we'll be close to 9 billion people by 2050. Right now we're about 7. But it's tapering off very, very quickly. So by the end of this century we'll probably have a negative growth at a total population of somewhere between 10 and 11 billion people and then the number will begin to go down. There is absolutely no reason why the Earth can't feed that magnitude of population at the time they will be with us.